Hey, welcome back to Two Super Guys Trade Stocks. I am Dylan. And I'm Vinny. And holy crap, we this is like our third attempt on this video. We lost the audio file. We had a power outage. We're trying to do this thing again. Tesla had a crappy earnings, and I think you're starting to see cracks in the foundation. And it's a real question of whether or not there's a Tesla bearish trade on the table. We're going to talk about that in a separate video as well. But we're going to talk about the earnings in this one and ARK Invest's latest price target. ARK Invest in the toilet, baby! <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. Two stupid guys trade stocks. Third time's a charm. Let's do this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, third, <laughs> fifth, something like that. Um, yeah. So you know, Tesla reported earnings after hours, gap down, held this like one sixty five ish level throughout the rest of the week. But uh, you know, the real question is when talk about the earnings report and how you know disappointed there were some you know, pretty negative headlines. This is what you're seeing from the likes of CNBC is that net income down 20% from last year, right? And, you know, if you go into Tesla's kind of like actual data here, they're going to talk a little bit about basically they've had to cut their prices. We did a separate video on that. There was a Tesla earnings trade, which unfortunately I goddamn didn't take. It was not that I disagreed with it. I just, I, my life has been a little bit busy. Okay. <laughs> so Same. I get Literally <laughs> wanted to do a, a short put because, you know, with the, the, the theta is, when it's short-term value, it's not terribly priced. Uh, two, I completely forgot. I have no excuse. I just I just completely yeah. slipped my mind. Yeah, I completely hear you. So, you know, these are some of the numbers that I pulled out that I, I just, the top one here made me, like, laugh comically, like, you know, like an evil Disney villain, okay? Uh, <laughs> you know, they reported $400 million in uh, free cash flow for the quarter, right? If we annualize that out and compare it to their market cap, it's a 0.3% free cash flow yield. That's incredibly good that uh, they should they should probably be higher in stock price. It's really good. Yeah, I mean, totally. Like, you know, there are absolutely like dog crap companies out there that have like 10% yields. Um, and then you have, you know, you're, you're kind of good big tech companies usually in that mid range of four to five percent, something like that. So, you know, this company is priced for absolutely positively balls to the wall growth, right? Like that's how they're priced. I think it's and actually priced better. more than that. I think like e even I mean, Munger said it best, right? This stock has kind of a cult following and rightfully so. If you bought in 2018 when everyone was like, you're an idiot, ah, you're kind of laughing right now. I get it. That's fair. Yeah. But it's terrifying to short. Munger's right because it's just yeah. almost fundamental. Sometimes just don't matter. It just matters what yeah. people buy it. Perception, right? Um, but, you know, this is kind of like the the real crux here, right? Is that their margins were fantastic, and they've had to absolutely crush this margin. The only company I've seen obliterate their margins faster than this is Intel. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and, and Dylan knows how I feel about Intel. <laughs> um, that's pretty. But good. you know, they're under underutilizing the factories, and that's kind of giving them a little headwind here because they're not at max capacity, right? Theoretically, you have like two curves come together, uh, and you should be producing right at the intersection point where you're getting the maximum like value per unit. That's like basic economics 101. Um, but you've also had this you know, reduced selling price, which th they've targeted. They that's an intentional thing. They want to move lower market. You know, unfortunately, the average new car now is like fifty thousand dollars. It's insane. You know, whereas uh, you know, you got to move down to like the thirty thousand dollars if you want to be able to capture a large portion of the market. Average new Tesla, fifty k. No, that was car overall <laughs> in the U.S. <laughs> what yeah. cars are people buying? I just bought trucks. A... Okay, pickup trucks. And All things right. Like okay, that. I was yeah, gonna say yeah, that's right? insane. 70, $80,000. Buy one. It's 29K. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, you are looking at still revenue growth for, for the actual vehicles, which is, you know, it's, it's good. 18% to you. That's pretty decent. If you're getting above 10%, that's good revenue growth. But it does not support these level of absolute exuberance. Uh, and you're just seeing, like I said, the utter obliteration of the margin here down 977 basis points. <laughs> then operating margin on 779, meaning they've been able to curtail costs a little bit, but still not to the degree where it's able to maintain any sort of operating margin even after, you know, cutting their overhead. Um, even the same same thing all the way down here. Just all these massive negative numbers, right? Um, there And don't forget, this is still auto manufacturer. So there's a lot of CapEx that has to go into this. Yeah, they produce $2.5 billion in cash flow, uh, but $2 billion needs to be reinvested in CapEx. Only $441 million ends up being free cash flow to equity holders. And can do a big thing that's not being talked about, uh, the, co the competition over the next two years for electric cars is going to be rough. 
there's so many, like even just the, the truck in general, there's like five or six mainstream companies, GMC, um, I, uh, Ford already has theirs. I think Chevy also, yeah. they're all putting out yeah. more and more electric cars. So it's going to get way harder. Yeah, no. And, you know, they certainly still do have an actual advantage because they have first mover. They have their their tons and tons of miles of full self-driving data. So I, I will give them some credit where credit's due. Um, I, I This is actually coming from ARK Invest, at least their kind of latest Tesla price target here. And uh, we were very fortunate to obtain some, like, secret footage of them producing this Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, so, Dylan, if you can... God. Exactly. That that is how Tesla. Uh, I mean, you know, gets priced by Ark Invest. Okay, this utter utter garbage. Just you know, hot 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 garbage. Uh, you know, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the numbers here, but you know, their expected value is two thousand per share in four years. Right? So, if anyone's doing the math on that, that is a uh, five trillion market cap from where yes. they're at right now. They're about five hundred billion, right? Okay. Or if you're just a simple, you know, Wall Street better, it's a 10x. Okay. Mm-hmm. 10x is literally the smallest unit that Wall Street better is talking, you know? That's fair. <laughs> yeah. I think if, at this point, they're going to be at like 15 to 20% of American GDP at that price or something around yeah, there. Yeah. Probably, right? Like uh, American GDP is like $30 trillion a year. It's close. Uh, it's around there. Yeah. So this is the part that really, uh, it, just like I can't believe people get paid for this crap. Like we call our channel too stupid gas trade stocks, but like Jesus Christ, like these people are as stupid as we are, but they're not actually owning up to their stupidity. Um, <laughs> they're only contributing sixty seven percent of the enterprise value and sixty four percent of EBITDA coming from this autonomous robo taxi system. Something that does not exist is very unlikely to exist in four years. And I would be maybe, maybe by twenty thirty, you might see some of them. Because this isn't entirely up to them. This is going to be held back by the actual like U.S. regulatory body in order to you know maintain safety for the road. Yeah, I, I get an you know, argument that I'd probably trust a robot over some of the people I've seen out there driving. Um, but still, they're going to be super, super slow in letting this thing onto public roadways in any sort of widespread scale. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where it has to be exponentially safer than a human driver. Right. Uh, like uh, I think NVIDIA had to back out of um, autonomous driving because of one death where the person was jaywalking. And it was like one out of like 50,000 rides, which is way better than humans, by the way. Um, she's she's on Elon crack or something with this timeline. It's just like when he, he says that we're going to have robots or something like personal yeah. robots in like two years. I don't know what his thing was. It's not going to happen. I, I, I would say 10 years, maybe. And that's being quite generous. Yeah. So you you just like I, I can't understand how people actually like read this thing. It, it, like seriously, can, can you can you find someone that actually like reads this thing and believes it to me? Because I don't even think the authors can seriously like honestly believe this crap. It Everyone at so Kathy Woods, man, ridiculous. it's a it's a cult. It's a, it's a Kathy Woods cult. <laughs> it is indeed a cult. So these are their expectations, right? You know. 1.3 million vehicles sold last year. This is all like last year's data. So this, this is pretty well, like, you know, this is locked in, right? Um, their bear case is that they'll sell 10 million vehicles by 2027 and that the average selling price is going to come down to $34,000. Uh, I don't think so. And I don't think so. All right. Like that doesn't make sense to me that they're going to be able to sell that many vehicles at that point in time. And then we come down here, this autonomous ride, uh, you know, held network. Oh, it's cool. It's just like, you know, $200 billion and like, you know, it's, it's totally fine. Like it's just the business that doesn't exist in their bear case scenario is going to have $200 billion in four years. Yep. Yeah. That's I don't, perfect sense. it's also not how cash works unless we had, like, I think we've had like two quarters of deflation in like 20 years to hit 34. We would just need like, I mean, essentially like 16 quarters of deflation until 2027 for this to happen. So, uh, Okay, I get what you're saying. But th- at the same time, you're talking about the margin going up 
right? 20, mm-hmm. uh, total margin, 26% to 51%. Now, if you truly believe they were going to generate this, this autonomous ride hailing stuff, then yeah, sure, that'd be a higher margin business, a much higher margin business. But th- they're also trying to say that, like, oh, you know, they're not going to be losing their shirt uh, on, on these vehicles at $34,000. And let's be honest, like, if, if your vehicle was making that much revenue in terms of this autonomous ride hailing service, why on earth would you sell it, never mind for $34,000? That vehicle price should be going up. It's Actually, no yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it, it diminishes the other aspect of the business. I don't. Yeah. I mean, you're 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 trying to. I mean, this entire thing is illogical. So if you focus on one as, I mean, it just doesn't work. This whole thing is stupid. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I completely agree, but I don't know. Well, convince me in the comments down below that I'm an idiot because I am an idiot. But you know, just about this, I think I'm right. <laughs> I, I think we should initiate a, a a short on on was Ark Invest Ark Kathy Woods yeah. Fund. I'm going to take a look at that. I'll take a look at shorting Ark because this is an insane number. So I love it. They bought more after the earnings. In case you didn't know that, of course they did. Why wouldn't they? Yeah. Jesus. All right. Catch you guys in the next one.